Okay, so in chapter 19, the third chapter of openness, uh, what we are going to do is take a closer look at exchange rate. So what we have assumed so far is that uh, government, central governments, or let's say the central banks, sort of just let exchange rate fluctuate around on its own and you know, they don't really pay a lot of attention to it. And exchange rate goes up and down on its own and whatever effect it has on the economy, it, it does. Well, that's of course not the case. Uh, central banks around the world spend a lot of their time trying to figure out what's going to, what's happening right now to the exchange rate, what we can expect to happen and adjust their policies accordingly. Uh, so the first thing that we are going to try and answer in this chapter is effectively, how is this exchange rate determined? Or what does it, uh, you know, what, what does exchange rate de uh, depend on? And once we've done that, we're going to try and answer the second question, which is effectively when exchange rate changes. So remember we have E, which is the nominal exchange rate, and we have epsilon, which is the real exchange rate. And what effects does it have on the economy when it goes up or down, or when this go up or down, what effect will it have? So these are the two questions that we will be focused on in this chapter. So let's take a look at what we have so far, okay? So this is the goods market condition where we have Y equals to Z. And in 207, the previous course, what we had was up to here, right? So we had output is equal to demand for goods, which was equal to consumption plus investment plus government expenditure. Uh, and then so far uh, in this course, equal to 09, we have introduced openness to the equation and uh, we have effectively added this, okay? And so of course we have NX, which is net export, which is basically uh, export minus import. And we've talked about these equations in some details in previous chapters. So if we take equation one and equation two and we combine them, uh, what we can do is take this part from equation one and just replace it uh, right here. Let's call this equation three. And we can just replace that minus M plus X with net export. Okay, and we know that net export is a function of Y, this right here, which is the domestic income. Uh, this, uh, this is a negative relationship with income is that when income goes up, we are going to uh, import more. As a result, net export is going to fall. Uh, net export also depends on foreign income. Uh, so when... Uh, income in another country goes up, they will buy more of our goods. As a result, our uh, export will go up. And so this is a positive relationship. And of course we have the real exchange rate. If exchange rate goes up, uh, goods in our country becomes expensive relative to goods in other countries, which are cheaper. As a result, we import more, we export less. And so this is a negative relationship. So let's work with this equation for the time being. Uh, before that, before moving any further, uh, what I need you guys to do is spend some time trying to figure this out. Okay, how does real interest rate and real exchange rate, so which are effectively R and epsilon, how does this two r and epsilon affect affect sorry affect uh, the demand and output of an economy? So demand is basically z output is y. So what are the you know implications of this and this going up or going down on the output of the economy? Uh, you guys can do that very easily just by looking at equation three right here. Mathematically, it's easy to do, but I, what, what I need you guys to do is also try to figure out the concepts and the theories behind it, okay? 
uh, try to understand the rationale behind it uh, and, and do that before moving ahead. Uh, so post the video and try to be very clear about the effect of real interest rate and real exchange rate on the demand and output of an economy. Okay, so let's uh, moving ahead. So what we are going to do in this chapter is we are going to look at only the short run. Okay. So if you remember in, in Eco 207, our course was divided into three parts, the short run, the medium run, and the long run analysis. And the short run analysis was between chapter three to five. And what we did during this short run chapters was that we focused only on goods, not prices. Because if you remember, we only introduced price and wage when we went to chapter seven. And then we looked at the, uh, what's it called, Phillips curve and all of that. That was in the medium run. In the short run, there is no price. Or what we are assuming is that in the short run, price is fixed. It's not going to change. So let's move ahead with that assumption. And there are two implications of looking at the short run. First of all, uh, remember that real interest rate is given by this equation, uh, P divided by P star, right? Now what we are assuming is that uh, price is fixed. So what that means is that P and P star are fixed. They're not going to change. If that is the case, then, and if we make a further assumption, just to simplify our task, that P by P star is equal to one. It can be any number. Uh, it can be four, for example, and it's not going to change. That's the assumption. That's the first assumption. And we're just going to make a simplifying assumption that this price index in two countries are the same. So they're equal to one. As a result, what we can say is that the real interest rate, sorry, the real exchange rate is equal to the nominal exchange rate. Okay, we will relax this assumption in chapter 20, but for this chapter, we are making this uh, assumption. And the second thing that's going to happen, of course, is that if price is fixed, there is no inflation. Inflation effectively is change in price level. If that's not going to happen, then remember we had in equal to seven, we had also looked at the Fisher equation, which told us that uh, Nominal interest, uh, nominal interest rate is equal to real interest rate plus inflation. However, if inflation is equal to zero, we have a scenario where nominal interest rate is equal to real interest rate, right? And once we have arrived here, what we can do is we can take this equation, this equation right here, and we can rewrite this in this form. Output is equal to consumption, which depends on Y and T, plus investment, which depends on Y. And instead of real interest rate, we are going to write nominal interest rate, plus G, plus NX, which depends on domestic output, foreign output, and instead of writing uh, real exchange rate, we are going to write nominal exchange rate. Okay. So effectively what we have done is we have changed this and this. And so now what we have is that goods market equilibrium implies that output 
is of course y depends negatively on both the nominal interest rate and nominal exchange rate. Okay, so this is the important part, nominal interest rate and nominal exchange rate. And now we can go for further analysis. Uh, so we will be doing that from the next video. So this is effectively just a setup, okay? for the analysis that we are going to be doing in chapter 19. So we started off with this equation, equation one that we had arrived at previously. And we did some simple manipulations and we have ended up with this equation. So now before moving on to the next chapter, uh, before moving on to the next video, make sure you guys understand the changes that we have made and the implications of those changes.